Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today I'm, I'm doing a repost on an old video that I had made where I made a kind of a silly mistake at the end. I messed up a, uh, a negative sign, which is kind of a uh, kind of a beginner's mistake, but uh, I, I, I didn't catch the mistake and I, I went all the way to posting it and somebody pointed it out. So here's the redo. So here's the integral we're going to be solving. Um, I tried doing this integral uh, directly with uh, Feynman integration uh, with various reparameterizations. I was unsuccessful, um, but I came up with a solution that does use Feynman integration in it, not as extensively as I'd like. But anyway, with that said, let's just get into the... Uh, to the video all right so our first step is just to use the properties of logarithms to break that thing up like that to break that natural log up just like that that should be no problem for anybody watching this video and then the uh the next thing i did uh you can see is i introduced a plus natural log one which is essentially plus zero so i really didn't do anything to uh I, I didn't do anything to it i, I put that negative sign there be, just so that everything you know is still correct we have negative natural log x plus one which is right there negative negative natural log x which is plus natural log x minus minus natural log two which is plus natural log two and then minus 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 natural log one which is minus zero so nothing changed and the reason I did that will become clear in the next step. So notice this, that natural log 2 minus natural log 1, which is exactly what we have here, is uh, what you get when you evaluate this integral. Likewise, natural log x plus 1 minus natural log x, which is right here, is exactly what you get when you evaluate this integral. So, we're going to replace those values with their integral representations, like this. Alright. So now, th this is our new, this is our new representation for our original integral, and it seems like we're making it a lot worse, but trust me, uh, we're not. Um, this this integral transforms nicely like this. Basically, I brought that uh, 1 over x minus 1 um, inside both of these integrals, um, did some algebraic manipulation, and we end up with this. That should be no problem. Um, next step. Is this basically I found a common denominator I multiplied this by t plus 1 over t plus 1 this by x plus t over x plus t um, and what you end up with is x minus 1 over t plus 1 times x plus t and that x minus 1 cancels with this x minus 1 you're left with nothing but this now you'll notice um, that this integral converges regardless of whether or not you evaluate it um, with respect to x or t. So we can go ahead and switch um, we can switch dx and dt there. So I do that in the next step and also I bring out the 1 over t plus 1 since it does not depend on x. All right next all I did is evaluated this integral. The integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x plus t dx is natural log t plus 1 minus natural log t. Okay, and that splits up nicely into two separate integrals. This first one, very easy to evaluate. You'll notice that we just have 1 over, uh, we just basically, we have u du, where our u is natural log t plus 1. Um, so that, that's very easy to evaluate. And it evaluates to natural log squared of 2 divided by 2. So now we've whittled down our integral to this. 
Okay, um, this one is not evaluatable uh, using traditional techniques. So we're going to, and I've actually done this integral on the channel before. Um, it evaluates to negative pi squared over 12. Um, but I'm just going to show how I get that really quick. Let's, uh, let's make a function f of t that's equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t over x plus 1 dx. Now, that integral can be represented by this sum. Um, basically, all you do is use the Taylor series representation for 1 over x plus 1, replace 1 over x plus 1 with it, bring the x to the t inside the sum, switch the summation and integration notations, evaluate the integral, and this is what you're left with. I'm not going to show all that. I've shown it on the channel too many times to count. Um, but anyway, if that's our f of t, uh, then this is f prime of t. Um, using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, uh, we can take the derivative with respect to t of this integral right here just by taking the partial with respect to t of the integrand. And all that does was is introduce a natural log x. So f prime of t is equal to this. But it's also equal to this sum. And you just take the derivative of this sum with respect to t by taking the derivative with respect to t term by term of the inner function. And this is what you end up with. So f prime of t is equal to both of those things. Now, if we evaluate f prime at 0, notice we get this integral, which is exactly what we're trying to find. Okay, so the value of this is equal to this evaluated at t is equal to 0. So these two things, these three things, are equivalent. All right. Now, I've shown on this channel before, and you guys are probably familiar with this, this is the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the squares. Um, you know, th this sum and this sum are the same thing. All you do is add one to the index and take one away from all the n's. Um, taking one away from this n as an exponent on negative one will just switch the sign of the entire sum. Um, so this is equal to this, and that's equal to negative pi squared over 12. All right, so we're done. Our original integral, this thing right here, is equal to pi squared, or I'm sorry, natural log squared of 2 divided by 2 minus a minus pi squared over 12. Uh, in my original video, um, I had this as minus pi squared over 12, like I said, kind of a Kind of beginner's mistake but it happens but this is this is the real answer it's natural log squared 2 over 2 plus pi squared over 12 but anyway guys there you go i hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time